So, tell me something terrible. The poison ivy, it got me. Just like got from me. Batman? <laughs> yes. I need to silence my phone in case my friend, my one friend texts me. I don't... It's past video game hours. Nobody's texting me. I don't even know where my phone is at. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. Considering I'm the one that's taking Is it the... weird that you can see the screen now? Yes. Are you going to be okay with that? I'll be all right. Okay. Disclaimer, guys. We're recording this in a different area, so this sounds weird. Sorry. Suffer. It's 88 degrees in our upstairs, and we're not going up there. No. So if the bird screams or if the dog barks. Or if you feel, if you hear bubbling from the fish tank, because we have to represent every animal kingdom in this household. Yes. Or if our voices are just weird. Let us know, and we won't do anything about it until it cools off. So <laughs> suffer. No. <We laughs> the might, next three months, guys, it's going to be bad audio. Yeah, we might try and better... Like we have fans. I don't know. We'll we'll listen back. But yeah. you let us know. We'll adjust. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, I'm Tiffany. Hi, I'm Scott. And you're listening to Tell Me Something Terrible. Yeah, you are. Where Scott just constantly interrupts me and makes things drag on longer than they should. Yeah, he does. <laughs> <laughs> so this one's uh, much more depressing than last week, and I'm sorry. That's okay. That's why we went with a hard liquor opposed to just a nice glass of wine. Mm-hmm. We we were prepared. We are. And the advantage of being down here, we can pause it and the kitchen's right around the corner. Yeah, we can just take another yacht. Yachtsy yadka. Okay. I don't even know what sort of language I'm trying to mimic with that terrible English, but... Just mash an amalgamation of all of them. Spell amalgamation right now. Exactly. Read your story. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so we had fun in the last episode covering the mullets. Um, so... Like every good roller coaster ride, let's really bring it down this week and end on a low note, shall we? Do I have to put my hands up in the air? Like in a yes. roller coaster? This is, we're not recording this visually. <laughs> it doesn't we, matter. Actually, we should my... have because it only catch you and I would just be the voice. Ugh, that'd be a bummer. It'd You're be right. you in the birdcage. Nope. The Speaking covered of which, birdcage. This is coming out Thursday? Friday. Friday. I know when we do podcasts. I have to edit them on Thursday. So to me, it's a Thursday episode, but to you guys, it's Friday. Which means tomorrow, Saturday, the Eloise video will go live on our YouTube channel yes. for the world to see. It uh-huh. currently is live for Patreons only because they get a special secret link. Ooh. But it is scheduled to go secret, live Saturday secret. morning. I think I picked 6 a.m. just because that's like our time. That's when the episodes get released on our website and all that. So yeah, the Eloise video. Go watch it. We will put it all over social media. Tell us what you think. It is long. Gur than we thought it would be. I ramble. It's like a friggin' TV show. So just enjoy that first episode. And you get Ooh. to see our faces. Sorry, our white cat came downstairs and she's <gasps> feral AF. So we we'll never get to see her. Mama. Yeah, it's because it's nighttime. See her? She's on the she's on the landing. Oh, I see her tail. Yep. Hi, anyway, mom. So you might hear a mew in the background of this episode. She'll be begging for wet food. No, nope. the only thing she comes. She down saw here the for. dog and she's gone. All right. See you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Poor mama cat. <laughs> All right. Uh, what are we doing? A roller coaster ride. I knew that. Yep. I heard that. Hands up. So you wanted a cult. I Okay, but I thought a cult was going to be a two-parter. What are you freaking out about? The game. There was a color change in light over that direction, and I realized the, the game is still oh, on. Oh, yeah. The tigers are yep. extra inning, so it's muted in the corner. <laughs> you weren't supposed to divulge. That's a behind-the-scenes secret. Sorry. Here. It was just really yellow for a second, and I was like, what's? Okay, there's not a fire. That's all that matters. <laughs> um, so so I wound up looking up like lesser known cults. Okay. There's a top ten list. Do you sort them by popularity when you go to search cults? <laughs> no, it was just it was just like a listicle or something, and I was like, Oh, these guys sound really, you know, lighthearted. A listicle. Like a list oh, okay. of things. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, I read a little blurb, like a tiny, like five sentence blip about this cult. And I was like, oh, fun. An arson fueled nudist Russian cult in Canada in the early 1900s. Oh, hold on. That's a lot to unpack. Mm-hmm. An arson fueled nudist cult, Russian cult Russian. in Canada. Mm-hmm. Okay. You think it would be lighthearted and fun, right? No, no, I don't. Russians are rarely lighthearted or fun. Um, and Canadians arsons, are, though. Arsons aren't fun. It just like they would catch things on fire in the nude in like rebellion against the government. So I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Anarchy. 
Yes. It's anarchy, ha- anarchy. It's <laughs> sorry. That's my, that's the worst Lafayette impression. Anarchy, ever. anarchy. How do you say it? Anarchy. Yeah. Anyway, it's a great. If you haven't seen Hamilton, you should. It'll bring you to we're tears, not, and you'll be crying by the Jamie end of it. For the fourth time, for not seeing Hamilton yet. Shut the fuck up. What? He hasn't seen Hamilton yet. Have you? Do you listen to our podcast? <laughs> no. We've talked about this before. I clearly forgot. Okay, good. No, he has not. Ugh. Maybe he has. That was like episode three. My that Jamie. That was literally like episode three. My Jamie has seen Hamilton. So your Jamie needs to jump on it. Okay. Okay. So, you know, I thought this can't be too terrible. Does this call have a fun name? Right? Um. Yes. Well, I mean, I Is suppose. it called like Dicks Out, Wicks Out? <laughs> no. Sorry. That's like, no. The, that's like the only nudist arson joke I come up with at that <laughs> short notice. But now I know what kind of cult we're going to start. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But we're actually just going to be a candle making call. It's going to be super fun. <laughs> Although nudist candle making seems dangerous. <laughs> That's like body waxing with a weird twist. <laughs> Watch out for your balls, boy. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's going to get dangerous. It's going to feel soothing and then it's going to hurt. <laughs> yes. It likes to lull you into a false sense of security and yeah. then rip everything out. Why do you smell like leather and pain? <laughs> that sounds like a good night to me. <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> Um, so after actually like looking into this, this cult, I was real Does wrong. I need a name. Yes. Okay. So you're going to have to buckle up, Buttercup. Uh, this is going to be, ro- like I said, a roller coaster ride. the second ride. Buttercup reference for the night, by the way. <laughs> it is. The first one was Princess Bride. Obviously, you weren't here for that. <laughs> um, so by the end of it, you might actually be siding with this cult. So they are called the Freedomites. Freedomites? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Not very original. Yep. Well, you know, it was the 1920s. What do you want? Um, Were they an off branch of the Mennonites? Because that would be a real game changer. (laughs) No, but they are an off branch of the... Oh, really? Yep. Okay, cool. I had never actually looked up the pronunciation. I have read this in my head. The Duke Hobers? Duke Hobers? Duke Hobers? Okay. Yep. Is It, it Russian? Yes. Oh, cool. Yep. Just so just, the <laughs> yeah, nailed it. So um, was that German? That was more German. Yeah, well, close I don't enough. actually know Russian. You know, um, so hopefully All my this Russian references are from James Bond, so they're terrible. Uh, yes. yes, or <laughs> Olga, the mushroom. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. The so connoisseur yes. Olga. So hopefully and then you go to ambulance or you go to an hospital. emergency. <laughs> emergency. You go to emergency. Yeah. Um, so hopefully this isn't too confusing. It's written slightly it's out been of eight order. Minutes and we've only gotten the fact that they're called the, the Freedomites, Freedomites and yep. from Russia and arsonists. Um, so it's written slightly out of order, but there's a lot of information to sift through. And there was like a lot of backstory and also a lot of misinformation because of the confusion of the media and their blatant disregard to actually like look into what they Fact were. Check. Re- yeah. Um, so the Duke Hubbers and the Freedomites were um, often confused in reporting because the biggest difference between the two are the Duke Hubbers are nonviolent and conservative. Just, just wore clothes. Yes. Yes. And just were like the kind of keep your head down sort of people. And then the Freedomites are violent, conservative, don't fuck with us or we will burn down your buildings kind of people. Okay. Destroy your village people. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So not, the not village people. Destroy your village people. Kind of people. Yeah. Yep. So the Freedomites is a radical subset of smaller Russian conservative Christians based religion called the Dukubers. The Dukubers fled Russia after refusing to take part in an armed battle against the Armenians by burning the Soviet's weapons. So okay. they were like, here, village, defend us. And they were like, nah, bro, peace, and lit all of the weapons on fire. Okay. And so then they were facing religious persecution. Can appreciate the visual effect. Yes. So they migrated to Canada to avoid religious persecution in the years between 1899 and 1904. I feel like this is really high. Okay. (laughs) So within the first few years... Quick mic check. Yeah. Well, it was stressing me out. It's in your periphs? Like, it was bad. Um, So within the first few years in Canada, this is where the subset of um, the Dukovers started to radicalize and split... From that original, they, they're called like the Orthodox or Community Dukobers, Um, and then they some of the subsets split into the Freedomites. So it gets confusing. So I hope you're good and drunk so you can follow along. Me? Yep. Or the general population? Both. 
Um, so the Dukabers believed in communal living, living off the land, and like heavy modesty and less greed, animal equality, and freedom. And then they were also vegetarians. Okay, hippies. Yes. Yeah. Um, and they were also against government sanctioned education, the sale of land, and registering as citizens, and also registering statistics like birth and death. And the Freedomites believed similar things, but had taken to violence in retaliation of the go- the Canadian government forcing them to assimilate to its culture. Um, they had taken to protesting in the nude, again, violently. The Orthodox... And violently in the nude? Violently in the nude. <laughs> like, they would bomb shit naked. They didn't give... They gave that no fucks. That is quite the statement. Yes. So, the Orthodox Dukobers... I'm not going to do that again. Dukobers? Dukobers. Um, Dookie hovers. Yep. They did come to the realization that they will have to purchase land in order to live communally. So that's what they did. Um, They purchased acreage from the Canadian government to set up their community and built their church, the Christian Community of Universal Brotherhood, near Saskatchewan. Saskatchewan? Yep. In their little village cluster that was called the Kootenays. The what? The Kootenays. Okay. Yep. The Kootenay? Kootenays? Kootenays. Mm -hmm. Here you say it. What do you think? No, no, I can see it from there. Kootenays? Yeah, Kootenays. Yep. Um, and that was in British Columbia. They call themselves the Cooties for sure. Yes. Did they? Yeah. No. No. Oh. <laughs> you <laughs> nodded emphatically, and I was like, oh. Because it's genius. Hello. Yeah. They needed a good marketing yeah. team, clearly. Um, so the freedom Come I catch the Cooties. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Don't they make a shot for that? Yeah. Circle, circle, dot, dot. Now I have my cootie shot. That's how you draw nipples, too. Or boobs. Circle, circle, dot, dot. Oh, I always did the circle, circle, and then the dot, dot underneath. I was just joking. Oh, well, clearly you're a boy and didn't do that sort of stuff. Let's go make cootie Um, catchers after this. (laughs) So the Freedomites eventually um, did not have... Do you remember MASH? Yes. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) (laughs) It was a mansion, apartment, shack, or house. Yep. Yes. Yep. Um, anybody underneath like the age <laughs> of like 29 is like what the fuck <laughs> we didn't have cell phones so our daughter's still oh no that's a cat never mind we're good oh. <laughs> our, our dumb dog running to get the cat that's not even on this floor she's upstairs dummy <laughs> anyway. you're lucky you're cute read your story about this <laughs> nudie cult <laughs> so the freedom mice eventually did not have an like an official leader um, to listen to, so, but the Dukobors did. So the Dukobors started getting letters from their that specific leader, or the Petushka. His name was Peter Ves- Vasilyevs. Vasil- <laughs> <laughs> Glad you chose a Russian, yes. a Russian theme for this one. Yeah, well, we got a suggestion in the comment to do another Russian, so I was just trying to warm up. And then oh yeah, yeah. on the YouTube video, yeah, the yeah, intro, and or, then and then next time that I do a Russian case, I'll just completely slaughter it. Gotcha. Worse than this. Um. So it, his name is Peter Valish. Valish. Peter. Oh v. my God. Peter had, V. Yes. I may or may not have taken an extra shot v- that you Vaselevic. didn't know about. Vasilievich. Yep. Virgin. Tell me, there's not any other way to pronounce that word right there. Where is it at? Yeah, Verigen. Verigen. Just an overdramatic way to say it. Ver- Verigen. Yeah. <laughs> um, so he was stuck in exile in suburbia and couldn't migrate with the group to Canada. So these letters, this actually took the form of a book um, that they would receive, is what Peter called, quote, fantasies and theories. Fucked up my papers. There we go. So these letters, and one in particular, really helped shape the Freedomites' beliefs and start differentiating them from their original religious philosophies. These fantasies were, quote, I would like to see education, as well as any written communication, of course, dropped altogether as a trial period. The limp dick mic. And in the second half of the quote, we maintain that education destroys the inclination to greet people. Also, schools corrupt the morals of children. And thirdly, all things through which education is actualized are obtained through great hardships. So he did not like public education. Not at all. Okay. Therefore, this is Peter of the Duber Hoobers. Do, yeah. The conservative ones. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> so <laughs> you laugh, but that's probably closer than what you're saying. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Can we, okay, from now on to the Duber Hoobers. The Duber Hoobers. The Duber Hoobers and the Freedomites. Yes. And okay. then the Freedomites were like the radical, like when you think of us, you have yeah. like your conservative Freedomites, right. Freedomites are the, na- Freedomites are the na- naked ones. And the Duber Hoobers are the crazy ones who think school's the devil. Right. And, yeah, okay. So to put this in like modern context, you have your conservative right people. And then like the Freedomites are like the Breitbart crazies. Maybe the, we'll see. Yes. Yeah, but they would not. They would be anti-naked people too. So let's just keep going. They're definitely not anti-naked violence. Okay. Okay. Read um, your stories. So, therefore, to participate in the subjugation of people in Is this any still the form quote? must be avoided. Yes. Okay. Yep. That's Peters. Peter continued in his letter to drop physical labor. One must go out and teach peace and charity which coincides with temperance. So you had to drop, you had to stop working and just preach the gospel. Don't go to school. Don't go to work. Okay. Just preach. Okay. Yep. So he's he's a religious cult. Well, yeah, they're conservative Christians. (laughs) Yeah. No, no, no. I know. This is the Duber Hoobers, right? These are the Duber Hoobers. And their head he guy, was the original leader. Their head guy, their head Peter is Peter. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so their head guy is Peter one. Old Peter. Don't worry, we'll get to new Peter. Um, Everybody so forgets about Peter, the old Peter when they get a new Peter. <laughs> yes. Yes. So old Peter, um, he was like, these are the things we believe in. This is the kind of like lifestyle we're trying to. It was the price tag when we bought this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No context there. <laughs> I just found a random string under this table. Will you keep reading your story? <laughs> so he was like, this is how we should live life. Yeah. And then in his ramblings, in this book that the the Duber Hoopers eventually um, got a hold of from there in this like fantasy ideal world, that's where the Freedomites got their new doctrine from, essentially. Okay. Yeah. Um, and lastly... In the, the letter, it says, and this is how like the the Freedomites were inspired to protest in the nude. I propose that people would gradually get used to physical nakedness. Spiritual nakedness is much more sad. Having worn out his clothing and having eaten up one's bread, mankind would come to condi- the condition of which I spoke earlier. So he's just under the assumption that I feel eventually, less bad about recording this completely in the nude now. I'm. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> I'm only in my underwear. I don't know when the fuck you became nude, but I missed that part. Um, so Peter managed to escape exile and found his way back to these, his people. These are dining room chairs. I'm not just going to sit here naked in them. <laughs> no. We host Thanksgiving and such, and I don't want to like steam clean these things. <laughs> no. Um, so. It's a weird shape pattern on there. <laughs> <laughs> don't mind that brown stain in the middle. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Peter managed to escape exile and found his way back to his people. He tried to reunite the group. So the Freedomites, also known as the free thinkers, um, after they were dubbed non-payers because of the refusal to pay dues to help pay for the land that the Duber do, what do you call them? <laughs> the du- Duber Hoobers? The Duber Hoobers, um, had to purchase from the Canadian government. They were also sent out in kind of like their own encampment called the Glade and essentially were cast out of the Orthodox Church duber hoopers so peter <laughs> it's official title mm-hmm. so uh peter encouraged the group as a whole to get along and to start to re- to like repair and rebuild their communal villages but the freedomites were still on the fringes because they've got like this radical like even more conservative perfectionism like ideology than the duber hoopers as, yeah. as a whole um so they were kind of they were rejected. The out, they were the outliers in the group of crazy people. That were rejected from one country and came to Canada to try to get away. And they didn't want to pay. Let's be honest. These are the cheap asses. I mean, like, but to be fair, like, this is what the Native Americans thought. I don't know And the how indigenous you, well, people thought. I don't know how you're supposed to pay dues if nobody's working anyway. They're doing, like, a little bit of stuff. Like, they do, like, they do farming and things like that. So, like, a lot of their money is through, like, the sort of, like, farm markets yeah. on the side of the roads and all those sort of things. Always and wash then, like, your produce. Some people, yes. <laughs> and then some people will, like, pick up, like, small, like, um, working kind of, like, you know, blue-collar kind of jobs to help mm-hmm. pay. And then the Freedomites were, like, 
nah, fuck you guys. We're not working. We're out here preaching to the Lord and we're not going to pay any dues because all land should be free. Fuck the government, which is great, except like that's not the established order. You got to kind of bend a little bit. All right. Proceed with your story. Anyway. The Freedomites were still on the fringes. Um, they were kind of rejected as a subcult up until the death of their leader in a rail railway explosion in 1924. Peter? So, yes. Uh, so that was a mid yawn. I just had to say his name. Peter V. Wait, yeah, Peter V. Yes, Peter because, V. Blew up in a railway explosion. Yes. Okay. Um. So their next leader, Peter. Uh, Peter P. Pe- <laughs> yes, Peter P. Peter Petrovich, who is Peter's son. Wait, Peter V's son is Peter P? Yes. I don't know how last names work in Russia, but they're doing it wrong. (laughs) They are. Oh, they went from the V to the P. Sorry. (laughs) And from one Peter to the next? That's that's some... I don't get that. Anyway, sorry. (laughs) Just that's how my brain works, guys. Welcome to a peek inside. (laughs) Okay, so So, let's talk about this new Peter. So new Peter came from Russia to lead the the do... Duber Hoobers. Duber Hoobers. Um, after his father's death in 1927. Is it even, it has, it does have. There's a K and an There's H one in it. B. It's, it's like Duke Hoppers. Yeah, Duke Hoppers. Yes. But, Duke Hoppers? Yeah, but Duber Hoobers is way better. Duber Hoobers? Okay. Um, so he, his first initial speech when he came to Canada was, um, an appeal to. I am your new Peter. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he, he had an appeal to unite the Duber Hoobers and the Freedomites together. And for the Freedomites to drop their extremism, their extremism. But in his second speech, the new Peter just inflated the Freedomites' heads, saying that, <laughs> quote. Sorry. <laughs> I wrote this trying to sound like intelligent and whimsical, but then you just totally ruined it. <laughs> Why? Because you inflamed their heads with the Peter talk? Yeah. <laughs> They're now engorged Freedomites with this <laughs> giant head thanks to their new Peter. Okay. You wrote this. I'm just listening. Tell me more. <laughs> so in his second speech. In Peter P.'s second speech. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> he just engorged the Freedomites' heads. Yes. <laughs> by they are tell- now throbbing at the seams. Ready to light shit on fire. <laughs> Butt ass naked. <laughs> okay. I don't see a problem here. <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> okay. So he told them, quote, <laughs> I can't do it because it's so much. I'm sorry. I just, it's so bad to go from talking about throbbing penises <laughs> to Jesus. I just can't. Spread your seed. Anyway, go on. So in his, in his second speech, um, he said, quote, for Christ, there are none other than the ringing of a bell awakening us and that the Freedomites were scouts and true servants of Christ. So this caused their ranks to swell. I don't want to hear shit about <laughs> swelling. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. No, we're good. So before the new Peter took over, there wasn't a lot of clashing occurring between the government and the Duber. The Duber Hoovers. Duber Hoovers. I like how you look at me for confirmation on how to say it wrong every time. <laughs> it's because I will not say it right. <laughs> consistently wrong. We'll put the actual name in the description of this in case you're super curious on how to yeah, say this. They still exist. Oh, okay. Yes. Um, for all our Duber Hoover listeners out there. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> we don't get that many Canadian <laughs> listeners. I mean, I don't know if we have any. So. No, we really don't. <sighs> Uh, sorry, I just realized that. Canadians don't podcast. They listen to AM radio still. No, they listen to just CBC and that's it. CBC? The Canadian Broadcasting. Okay. Don't worry. It's fine. I listen to a lot of CBC podcasts. I just, I, I've never like, I mean, it makes sense like acronomically. That's sure. Not, that is definitely not a word. It's a word now. Acronym wise, but I just would never think that it's the CBC. Anyway. Keep going. So the Great Depression was approaching, and between the Freedomites not paying dues to the community slash church and what little income the do the doofa boober do <laughs> <laughs> the duck haubers yes. um generated overall, the the loan that they um took out for the land they purchased, it wound up going into default by like nineteen oh eight. So then they were considered squatters by the Canadian government. So the Canadian government wanted to um then they wanted to mandate schooling. 
And if you didn't send your child to a public school, they were forced to be sent to residential schools. Do you know what a residential school is? I don't. We'll get to it. Um, Ooh, suspense. It's bad. She's a professional, folks. It's bad. It doesn't sound great. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I said, the do her boo do it the, the, <laughs> the Dachauers. The Dachauers. The Dachauers were considered squatters on the land and lost all of the em- <laughs> Sorry. I just envision naked Russian people sk- like <laughs> squatting around ca- Canada. <laughs> They've got really nice thighs. Like the ugliest ducks you've ever seen. <laughs> um, so they were considered squatters on the land and they lost all of the improvements that they'd made to the property, like their community centers and like buildings and stuff like that. Uh-huh. So the Canadian government reorganized the the do Duho- the Duber Boobers um, <laughs> Church to the United. Now they're the Doobie Boobers. Yeah. Perfect. So <laughs> they had changed their church to the United Spiritual Communities of Christ, and then in 1921 and 1922, two school buildings mysteriously burst into flames. 11 schools in total were burned, and there was no evidence pointing to who could have committed the arson, but the Duhububers and the neighboring villages is all assumed that it was definitely the Freedomites. So this is when things really start Faulty to heat up. Faulty burners. Really heat up? Really? That was poor choice of words, wasn't it? <laughs> Um, so they really started to heat up between the Freedomites, the Duhububers, and the Canadian government. By the 1930s... The Mountmies? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yep, the RCMP and the government and the mm-hmm. British Columbia. So by the 1930s, the Freedomites were being forced off their land, which resulted in them marching to a nearby settlement of other <laughs> Duhububers, which had broken away from the original settlement. They were stopped by the police and told that they needed to head back. If you think to- The Walking Dead's scary? Can you imagine a, a just a... A tr- like a group of naked they Russians weren't na- they just weren't naked yet. marching towards you. They weren't <laughs> naked yet. It was just a bunch of like, they were in like... Real so they're like, not a nudist like- colony. They just like to set fires naked. Yes. Oh, okay. So they protested in the nude. Okay. So like... They lived their the, lives The Duke of Ubers, <laughs> <laughs> they were very conservative. Mm-hmm. Like, like jawline to the toes kind of covered. Yeah. Real simple floral print. Like you know, Amish-esque kind of yeah. attire. And then the Freedomites were a little less conservative. They still dressed conservatively, but they were like, oh, you want us to do shit? We're going to be insane and strip down because that's what their leaders said eventually would wind up happening. This is feels, that- I can't, I, the hardest thing for this for me is that it's in the 19, like early 1900s. Mm-hmm. This feels like a 1960s vibe. Like It gets to it. Okay, cool. They protest for a long okay, time. Well, keep um, going because it's... We've been here a minute. Okay. We got we we got 60 more years to cover. Okay. I'm going to need another drink soon. Keep going. <laughs> Let's pause for a shot, shall we? <laughs> um, so there's no evidence pointing to the Freedomites that they were the ones that committed arson or anybody really. Um, but the the du- the Duhaboobers and the neighboring villages all assumed that it was definitely the Freedomites that had done it. So this is when things really start heating up between the Freedomites. You said this. You made yeah, this bad joke once. Mm-hmm. Already. Mm-hmm. Underline that, would you? I know. Your, with your anxiety okay. pen. There we go. Let's, there we let's are. proceed. Restart. So by the 1930s, the Freedomites were being forced from their land, which resulted in them marching to the nearby settlement yep. of other Duhububers, mm-hmm. which had broken away from the original like settlement. Yeah. They were stopped by the police and told to head back home to the land that they were kicked off of. So the Freedomites stripped down naked in protest. <laughs> Other Orthodox uh, Duhububers joined them in the solidarity. Soon the police had taken over 300 people into custody and created like a tent city, essentially, to hold the protesters, the nudie protesters. Uh So eventually their protests... You're going to need to wash those handcuffs. Yeah. (laughs) So eventually their protests led to the burning of their own money, possessions, and to demonstrate their lack of need of material things, all the way up to the bombing of... I dropped my anxiety pen. <sighs> well, you better do something about that. I I made it. <laughs> okay. so, so this led up to burning their own things and the other local Duhububers' possessions as well, all the way up to the bombing of government buildings, transportation, and communication in local businesses that the Freedomites deemed to be mere, uh, materialistic zealots. Okay. All while in the nude. In the mm-hmm. 1920s and 30s, and then again in the 1960s. Naturally. See, I knew where you'd get there. Yeah, eventually. Uh-huh. So there was 
the occasional Freedomite that was killed while making their own bombs, and the Freedomites carried out nearly 300 acts of bombing, arson, and attacks against Canada over the course of 40 years. The most dramatic incident was the bombing of a transmission tower in southeast British Columbia in 1962. In an attempt to quell the annoyance of the Freedomites... So they're doing these like once a month. The, yeah, it's often. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um. They did it in the 20s and 30s and then kind of like started back up in the late 50s, early 60s. Uh-huh. And we'll get to why they did that. So the Canadian government enacted Operation Snatch. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Of course they did. They did. So this started in 1952. This is the Canadian government? Mm-hmm. See, they have a marketing team. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what? That's bad because it's children. Okay, then they have a terrible market. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what is Operation Snatch? Tell me more. So starting in Operation 1950- H. <laughs> Sorry. One million dollars. Um, so starting in 1952, even though they were warned by a report done by the University of British Columbia. <laughs> that Snatch was a bad ter- term. Yep, they decided that they were going to take away the Freedomites' children. Okay. Yep. So even though the Dukobars did not believe... To Operation Kidnap seemed a little too, you know... On the nose. Yeah. Yeah. Too, too edgy. Yep. So they, even though the Dukobars did not want to send their children to organized public schools, they did at least concede to sending their children to school until the age of 12. The Freedomites vehemently protested this. In response, the government decided to separate the children from the parents in order to sort of like quell the annoyance of this like radical so like mass cps yeah and except there's like i just i mean i understand you need to go to school but like maybe not send them to like residential schools which we still haven't heard about you'll hear about in a second because the cliffhanger from 26 minutes you'll ago. hear about in a second <laughs> um so this is where the residential schools come into play now, obviously, you haven't heard of them. And for people listening who have not also heard of them, let's go over them for a minute just to really make this. Ooh, let's do. Yeah. We're going to make this really like depressing episode. Take it to an even lower um, note. So they were mandatory boarding schools. In case you for, were having a really good day, guys. Yeah, we're going to ruin it. So they were mandatory boarding schools for indigenous people in Canada, funded by the government and the Christian churches. The goal was to force assimilation into the accepted culture. Indigenous to people? Natives. I, I'm, yeah, I'm aware what the term indigenous it means. It started as an indigenous, okay. and that's primarily what was put in there. But they had no other place to put the children of the Dukabars and the Freedomites. Okay. Which, like, the Dukabars just wanted to keep their head down and do their own thing. The Freedomites were the ones that were, like, the potsters. Going against the grain, yeah. Yeah, but because the government just sort of lumped them into one thing, they were like, all of these humans are horrible, so the only way to fix this is to pull their children away so that they don't act like them anymore. Yeah. So, the point of a... Residential residential school? school, Yes, was to force the assimilation into the accepted culture that, you know, the white people came over and said, this is what you need to do. And this was to quote... So they made them drink Molson and play hockey and all the good Canadian stuff? No. No? Uh, the the that, residential... That wouldn't have been that depressing. No. The residential schools, uh, the whole point was to quote, kill the Indian in the child. Oh. Mm-hmm. They call them Indians in Canada too? Mm-hmm. Because they thought that they were I making know. their way to India. Well, I knew that was here. I just didn't realize Canadian indigenous people were also called, in all honesty, if you would have said they are called eskimos i'd have believed you more i just don't like literally i would not assume they called their indigenous people indians and eskimos okay and other sorts of like things that they just sort of lumped everybody together and you're like no there's a bunch of different tribes they're just og canadians is what they should be called yeah yeah which is why they use the word natives no none of them they're all like (laughs) fuck you guys the canadian government is as bad as our government like have you have you heard of the um the uh, Trail of Tears. No, you asked that. We'll cover that. Knowing that I did, it's depressing. Um. So anyway, it, my, my schools, history knowledge has been covered in these twenty whatever episodes. So, <laughs> so residential schools were a one hundred year old program. Well, one hundred 
long, year long program that uh, forcibly took children from their families and hid them away in schools where families were not allowed to visit, which naturally is a breeding ground for corruption. There was an estimated 150,000 children that were removed and put into these school systems and approximately 3,200 to 6,000 children deaths directly linked to the sexual and physical abuse that took place in them. Okay. And that's just an estimate. Seems like good places then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. So this number is inaccurate due to poor record keeping. So the actual number of deaths directly related to residential schools and also like abuse. Could be astronomically higher. Insane. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's just kind of a light skim on the surface of residential schools. So, so they, this, they deserve their own podcast at some point. Yes, they do. Um, so this is where they placed the Freedomite children during Operation Snatch. And this just radicalized the Freedomite movement even further. Between 1953 and 1959, roughly 200 Freedomite children aged 7 <laughs> to 15. Sorry. I can just see these naked crazy people in the streets just screaming, fuck the snatch. Like <laughs> over and over and over again. Fuck this the is snatch. why people Fuck need marketing teams. Exactly. This would have pissed off a lot of people. Um. So, the the children aged seven to fifteen were separated from their families and put in one of the residential schools in New Buffalo. The children were crowded into a school fit for forty five to fifty children. How many kids? About two hundred. Sorry, that was a huge yawn. Yeah, I understand the disassociation. That was not a dramatic point. pause. Yeah. As dramatically paused as it sounded, that was just me yawning because I'm sleepy. He cares nothing about your children, guys. Um, no, I do. I do. <laughs> not, well, not yours. If you're listening, I probably don't care about yours, but I care about these kids. Yeah. If they died, mm. or they got snatched and then stuck in this shit song. Shitty school. Yeah. So shitty the- school situation. Yeah. Try to say that. That's not easy. No. Want another shot of vodka? No, so, unless it's dosed with caffeine. So their families were only allowed to visit one hour every three months, and only two family members were allowed to visit at once. That's like prison, but worse. Yeah, seven to fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Because you mentioned someone's lily, uh, I'd fucking kill somebody. Like right? I get why you were blowing buildings up. Yeah, I totally understand. And yeah. if your tits out while you're doing it, it's the only way to catch attention. Go for it, bruh. <laughs> So punishment for misbehavior was to remove any family visits. Eventually, a fence was installed around the school in 1956. So it is prison. Visitations could only take place with this fence between the children and the parents. Oh, even worse. Yep. So parents were forced to go before magistrates agreeing to send their children to the schools. Blow them all up. Yep. So, surprise, this is when the bombings and protests really started to ramp up. 148 Freedomites were arrested for marching nude next to a school when their children were first taken away. And in response, the government just snatched to more children. Hundreds more were arrested and jailed between 1959 and 1962 in protest after bombing the railways and other structures. 36 were eventually charged with arson in, a 19, in 1962, so the protests slowed down. I heard my phone ding, so it's somewhere on the first floor. Good. Yep. <laughs> so the children were eventually given back, and the the doohoboobers were allowed to buy their land back from the government again. After how long, though? Like they started decades. Nineteen oh eight is when things really hit the fan, and they were like slowed down on like being able to pay yeah. their bills, and eventually were considered squatters. I should know yeah. when Operation Snatch went into in the fifties. Okay, so this is at least five or six. This is a years full yet. like decade in. Okay. Yep, and so the lawsuits against the government for children child abuse while their kids were in the care of the residential schools have all been denied. There's air quotes around care in case you guys couldn't hear yep. them. So the British Columbia so British Columbia did finally receive release a statement of regret on the treatment of the Freedomites and the Dohobers Dohobers and but they have yet to give a public apology. In twenty twenty one. That's this year. Yes. For keeping track at home. Yeah. They still have not apologized for the shit that they put these people through. Oh, um, I thought you were going to say they finally did. Nope. There's still, no, nope, still cool. nothing. Just a statement of regret. Like, oh. oh, it's a shame that this happened to your children. Hashtag regrets. Mm-hmm. So they migrated here in 1902. Like, that's like how long. So I kind of understand. The Freedomites, I think there's less than 2,500. There's a few thousand. Still, Doko- right yeah. Now? Yes. And there's still like a few thousand doofoo boobers that still exist in Saskatchewan. So I know hmm. I left out a lot. 
and this wasn't like super cultish. Like I looked into it and was like, ooh, naked arsonist, this will be fun. And then it just turned into a really sad story, but I'd already dedicated myself to this research. <laughs> so this is the episode you get on our first cult coverage. So mullets, super lighthearted. Mm-hmm. And then this one pretty much covers the gamut of terrible things. Yes. Child abuse is pretty much, I mean, that, like, yeah. You're... Hey, but at least there were no names. Ow. Sugar plum. <laughs> what did you do? That's bleeding. I just kicked that chair so hard my ankle's bleeding. Oh, no. I can't sit in a chair that has stable legs. It has to have be a spinny chair. If you had a spinny chair, you would just roll to the middle of the house. I'm going to need a Band-Aid. <laughs> I'm going to blood all over Guys, our carpet. His whole foot is going <laughs> to fall off. <laughs> I'm a diabetic. <laughs> You don't realize my that's gonna literally. It's I have gonna a, take I have a I have a nick on my foot, and it's gonna be there until winter. Don't worry, we'll update you at Christmas when it finally heals. Okay, we gotta wrap this up. Not to bleed on the carpet. <laughs> so my sources are Wikipedia, of course, the um, Canadian Journal for Traditional Elevate. Music, <laughs> which was written in 1976 by F M F M Mealing, um, the Dokobor Genealogy website, the Origin of Freedomite Movement by William Sokoroff and the Canadian Encyclopedia.ca, which, quite frankly, I don't uh, consider that reputable of a source, considering... It's slightly they... biased? Yeah. Yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, the Canadians wrote it about their his- their side of the history. Seriously, my... F- yeah. You see, I don't have to sit now. All right. Guys, it's grown to like a dime-sized <laughs> blood spot. <laughs> if it drips on the carpet, it's just going to be more work for oh, us. Oh, no, all the spatter. All the spatter. <laughs> I promise. See episode 24. Who knows? Five? It doesn't four. matter. It really three? doesn't matter. Who Not knows? three. 23 was MJ. Yes, it was. That's Michael Jordan. Todd. Um. <laughs> Not Michael Jackson. <laughs> Todd. <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening. If you made it this far, congrats. This one was sad. It was. Um, drink all your Russian liquors and drown your sorrows. In this hey, one. vodka was a very appropriate. Hey, uh, I didn't even know that when I started pouring those shots. Synchronicities. Uh, two hours ago. Our dog <laughs> looks exhausted, too. All right. Thanks for listening, guys. <coughs> He's um, dying. He's fading fast. Yeah. Um, Please check out the YouTube video on Eloise. It's 42 minutes long. If you're only going to watch two minutes of it, watch like 38 to 40. The last audio clip's the best part of the whole it thing. It really is. It's the ghost that had a crush on me. Yes. If you skip through all of it. Yeah. And let us know what you think. So, And you'll see that all over social media. All right. We Shameless need to go, plugging. Yes. I need to go clean my foot off because I can't sit still and I judo kick the crap out of my chair. <laughs> we record one time in a different space and I don't know how to sit. <laughs> Look how much I moved around pre-recording yes, though, uh, going, I don't know what yep, to do with my hands. All right. Thanks, guys. Okay, thanks. Uh, goodbye. Bye. Thanks for listening to our terrible podcast. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, or wherever you like to listen. Feel free to follow us on Twitter at TMSTPod. And if you'd like to support the show, you can find us on Patreon at Tell Me Something Terrible. Oof, that was terrible.